In August 1990, the United States military began planning an air offensive campaign against Iraq. However, the military noticed that a few command and control bunkers in Baghdad were located deep underground and could withstand most bunker-busting bombs. Military strategists raised concerns about the ability of current BLU-109-B to penetrate such fortified structures. So the U.S. Air Force Air Armament Division at Eglin Air Force Base was tasked to create a weapon that could neutralize such targets. As such, the GBU-28 was born. This new weapon was the first of its kind and could penetrate deep within the ground to destroy underground facilities. The bomb was so successful that it became the go-to weapon for the military when needing to destroy underground targets. But what makes the GBU-28 so special? And why was it so successful? In modern warfare, underground military facilities present a formidable challenge for adversaries. Buried deep within mountains or reinforced concrete, these fortifications house critical command centers, ammunition stockpiles, and research laboratories. As such, the U.S. military has prioritized developing specialized bombs capable of penetrating earth and concrete to reach these hidden structures. These remarkable bunker buster weapons have become a key asset on the battlefield. During the 1991 Gulf War ground campaign, the U.S.-led coalition made intense efforts to neutralize Saddam Hussein's widespread underground command network. With little time, there was a rushed development of an innovative new bunker buster bomb as part of Operation Desert Storm, aiming to reach the deepest bunkers in Baghdad. These fortifications consisted of a maze of reinforced concrete chambers housing command facilities for thousands of military personnel. Equipped with thick steel-reinforced concrete walls and stuck to withstand extended sieges, they were virtually impenetrable to standard bombs. For instance, the BLU-109 penetrating warhead on the GBU-24 bomb lacked the power to damage such hardened targets. Saddam's bunkers simply lay beyond the reach of any existing penetrating weapon. This dire situation demanded an entirely new class of bunker busters more powerful than anything seen before. Facing a tight deadline, U.S. weapons developers were given just 10 weeks to design and build a bomb capable of destroying Iraq's deepest bunkers. However, such an ambitious task requires specific approaches to design this weapon of destruction. The developers came up with a few tactics to solve this problem. The first tactic focused on maximizing the weapon's overall weight to grant it tremendous kinetic energy upon impact, enabling the bomb to smash through layers of earth and concrete using raw force. The second approach centered on reducing the diameter of the bomb as much as possible to minimize resistance during penetration, allowing the weapon to concentrate its energy to maximum effect. The third method revolves around incorporating a large rocket motor to dramatically boost the bomb's speed providing a powerful burst of propulsion to help spear through obstacles and plunge deeper into the bunker. In a sudden breakthrough, a Lockheed engineer proposed repurposing long steel artillery barrels from U.S. Army stockpiles as casings for the bomb. Developers selected two 10-foot long, 10-inch wide steel tubes from M110 howitzers and shortened them while adding stabilization fins. The resulting bomb measured an imposing 19 feet in length and 14.5 inches in width weighing a colossal 4,400 pounds. If you're enjoying the video so far, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more military content just like this. Within this robust steel barrel casing was packed approximately 650 pounds of tritonal high explosive, consisting of an 80-20 mix of TNT and fine aluminum powder. Adding aluminum enhanced the blast effect increasing the detonation pressure substantially compared to TNT alone. At the nose, a laser guidance package was attached to hone in on markers pinned on targets by laser. Rear fins were also added to maintain stability during flight until the weapon slammed into the earth like a giant nail. In a typical attack, intelligence sources first locate a bunker and analyze it through aerial surveillance and satellite imagery. Critical details like layout, dimensions, composition, and weak points help inform attack plans. Then, a stealth bomber, like the B-2 Spirit or an F-111 bomber, would transport the GBU-28 bomb near the target area. As the bomb falls, it can reach speeds exceeding 500 miles per hour due to gravity and its streamlined design. The weapon functions as a rigid kinetic projectile, concentrating the huge force generated through its speed and weight into a small point at the nose. Hitting the earth, the bomb burrows through layers of soil and concrete like a speeding arrow. While a preset timer allows the bomb to penetrate to a set depth before detonating, newer precision fuses utilize microprocessors and sensors to detect the resistant level during penetration 
and explode at the optimal moment deep inside the bunker. This maximizes both penetration potential and explosive damage on vital, hardened internal structures. On February 27, 1991, with the Gulf War nearing its end, two GBU-28 bunker buster bombs arrived at Taif Air Base in Saudi Arabia, transported via C-141 aircraft. They were urgently rushed for an ambitious mission, to destroy hardened underground bunkers buried deep below al Taji Air Base northwest of Baghdad. These fortifications consisted of a network of tunnels and concrete structures resistant to previous aerial bombardments, housing bath, party leadership, and critical military communications, infrastructure were priority targets that may have contributed to Saddam Hussein's decision for a ceasefire the next day. As night fell, two F-111F strike aircraft were loaded with massive bombs. Dubbed Cardinal 71 and Cardinal 72, the crews could independently laser paint their target or mark for the other plane. Piloted by Lieutenant Colonel Ken Combs, the first F-111 narrowly missed the target during release. Consequently, the second aircraft crew of Colonel David White and Captain Tommy Himes swiftly adjusted to make an accurate drop target. Moments after impact, satellite imagery showed smoke billowing out of multiple bunker air vents, confirming a direct hit with extensive damage deep underground. The explosive force violently collapsed tunnels and destroyed critical equipment across a wide area. As one of the final bombing runs before the ceasefire, analysts believed the successful GBU-28 attack contributed to Iraq's decision to end hostilities. Following this debut mission, the GBU-28 secured its reputation as a versatile bunker-busting weapon. Both the U.S. Air Force and international allies have deployed it in subsequent conflicts across Iraq, Yugoslavia, Afghanistan, and the Gaza Strip. GBU-28 bombs remain a vital tool for neutralizing hardened enemy targets buried far below ground. After its impactful debut in 1991, the GBU-28 rapidly gained fame for its previously unattainable capacity to destroy fortified underground facilities. Initially reserved solely for United States Air Force use, the bomb did not see combat again until 1999 in NATO's Yugoslavian air campaign. Impressed by its effectiveness, Israel purchased over 100 GBU-28s in 2005, becoming the weapon's first foreign buyer. Despite reports of potential GBU strikes in the 2008-2009 Gaza War, Israel only confirmed its first use in 2021's Operation Guardian of the Walls, hitting Hamas tunnels and underground headquarters. Analysts pronounced the large bunker buster was devastatingly effective when accurate intelligence guided placement. In 2009, South Korea also bought an undisclosed number of GBU-28 bombs to reinforce defenses against North Korea's extensive buried tunnel complexes and hardened artillery sites. Seoul deployed precision air capability and specialized munitions like the GBU-28 as centerpieces of strategies to neutralize North Korean threats before ground invasion. With better targeting and intelligence gathering capacity, enabling accurate strikes on deeply buried installations, even small entrance apertures can prove vulnerable. Moving forward, the Air Force's 4,700-pound triple-finned GBU-72 will likely replace the older GBU-28 for most buried targets. Using a composite carbon fiber warhead and microprocessor-based fuse for maximum penetration, the GBU-72 represents the next evolution in bunker buster technology to defeat dangerous underground enemy sanctuaries. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe to this channel, hit that like button, and turn on the notification bell to get notified anytime we post amazing videos like this.